One cannot ignore the association of music with prophecy in the Bible because there are so many passages about it. One such passage is 1 Chronicles 25, verse 1 through 8, which tells us that the same men who accompanied David's burnt offerings, Haman and Jedithan, are also set aside to prophesy with lyres, harps, and cymbals. Biblical prophecy is the revealing of divine truths to mankind through a human mouthpiece. So if we believe, like David and many other Old Testament passages, that music is prophetic, then music is a mouthpiece for the Word of God. The voice of the Lord speaks through music, revealing truths to us. I challenge you to find a more reverent estimation of music anywhere. But is music always prophetic? I hardly think so. Even in the Bible, we find few examples of true prophecy. Despite our most concerted efforts, music will not be prophetic unless God wills it to be. However, when music does prophesy, I think we will know. We will know by signs. Evils will be denounced. Eternal truths will be declared. Curtains will be torn back to illuminate upright paths. I think we should pray and, and hope for the Holy Spirit to speak through our music in these such revolutionary ways. Now let's dig a little deeper into how exactly music prophesies. First, we can receive prophecy through listening to music. The sensorial experience of just hearing music elicits emotional responses in us, which trigger all kinds of contemplations about the world. For example, when you listen to a Rachmaninoff concerto, you're going to feel um, an array of emotions, maybe like brooding sadness, extroversion, nostalgia, or romantic longing. And you might make some assumptions about the world based on these emotions, like life is bittersweet, decadence is beautiful, aim for tranquility, things were better in the past, or maybe with love comes despair. Juxtapose this listening experience with that of any Metallica song, for example. You'll likely arrive at different conclusions about the world, but I won't make any judgments about which conclusions are better because I think you can get a lot out of both Rachmaninoff and Metallica, and I love both. The point, though, is that God can reveal the world's beauty or ugliness through any kind of music imaginable. Second, the doing of music is prophetic. We are creatures of doing, fashioned in the image of a creator God. God wants us to participate in creation and in the act of creating. And even if you don't think you are creative, you are. You create when you cook a meal, write an email, or solve any life problem. When we make music, we engage with creation physically, mentally, and spiritually. When we make something out of nothing, like song out of silence, we invite God to create through us. We invite God to speak prophecy through us when we make music. Third, music prophesies within contexts. Biblically speaking, prophecies have arisen at specific times and specific places for specific peoples. Prophecies address the problems of God's people within their particular contexts. And music does the same thing. For example, think about Mahalia Jackson's performance of the song, I've been buked and I've been scorned. Um, this was in 1963, and you cannot separate it from that context the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. And when combined with Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, 
surely you must say this performance was prophetic. Um, her performance of the song, I've Been Buked and I've Been Scorned, prophesied to African Americans the eventual punishment of their professors, oppressors, and the promise of liberation. So music in context matters because God prophesies through music in time and place. How can we apply this knowledge to our jobs? Well, we can listen for God and respond by intentionally participating in creation. We can address those who suffer with music that names the evils of the world and glorifies the grace of God in this world. May God use us to deliver his message. Now in the comments below, tell us, have you ever been um, on the receiving end or the giving end of prophetic music making? And what was that like for you? All right, this was a heavy one. So wipe the sweat off your brow and keep on moving to the next lesson. You're doing great.